the Neanderthal thing, right? Like that comes out of left field. I'm white and I've got everything I need. No one clutches their purses when they're in a room alone with me. And I can drive for any neighborhood I please. At any hour, and the police don't do a thing. So if I see a penny on the ground, I leave it alone and fuck it flip it. I'm a straight white male in America. I've got everything I need. I'm a guy getting paid more than a girl with a degree. And I can walk down the streets after dark, no one wants to rape me. And I can get a girl pregnant and just as easily flee. Just like my straight white male dad did to me. So if I see a penny on the ground, I leave it alone and fucking flip it. I'm a straight white male in America. I've got all the luck I need. I've got a pile of broken mirrors and I'm walking under ladders and I'm spilling tons of salt. But to me that doesn't matter because my skin and my gender and my orientation are the best things to have if you live in this nation. I recommend it highly. a penny on the ground I leave it alone and fucking flip it I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need Shit's gonna work out for me Cause I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need Hey everyone, welcome to the Intellectual Dollar Tree We do this show live every Wednesday at 7pm Pacific Right here on Twitch, that's twitch.tv slash Echoplex Media, a simulcasting to uh, other places where no one watches live, as far as I know. Uh, also to our IceCast server that I haven't checked the uh, metrics on in six months. Um, you can support this project at eplex.store, monthly memberships, merch, all that good stuff. If you don't care about the merch and you're already a Patreon user and don't want to sign up for something new, totally fine with me if you sign up at Patreon, patreon.com slash Echoplex. And uh, I'm producer Dave, can be found on Grinder. And I'm HK Perrin. I'm back after a, a bit of a leave. Uh, a good friend passed away, so I've been grieving that loss. But uh, now I'm back and I'm ready to go again. Uh, and you can find me on Mastodon at hperrin at port87.social. Uh, and you can find me in the chat where my name is Silfweed. Uh, I also have a channel on twitch.tv. So if you want to follow Silfweed, I will sometimes game, you know, every few months. <laughs> Could you do me a favor and uh, uh, leave and rejoin your your video? Your audio sounds a bit robotic -y and weird. Okay, uh, I will do that. Uh All right, everybody, just a quick programming note. There's going to be no uh, down ballot or public comment next Tuesday. The councilman has some things to do, and I would like to take some time off. We're going to see if when we get HK back, his uh, audio is uh, not doing what it was just doing. Because what it was just doing was, um, I would <clears throat> it was annoying. I don't know if anybody heard that. Let's let's check this out now. Uh, reintroduce yourself. Uh, I am H. Perrin. Uh, so I've been on a bit of a leave recently uh, because a, a friend passed away. So I've been uh, grieving that loss, but I'm back uh, and I am uh, I'm ready to go again. You can find me on Mastodon at H. Perrin at port 87.social. Uh, and you can find me in the chat where my name is Silfweed. Uh, that is also the name of my channel on Twitch where sometimes I'll play games. Uh, so you can follow me there and, uh, yeah. Well, welcome back. It's, uh, Bill Maher on the Sam Harris show. Oh gosh. <laughs> can you redo the, the videos, putting them in the right spot? Thank you. Welcome to the Making Sense podcast. This is Sam Harris. Oh, is he going to do this? Okay. You think he's going to do that? Okay. You think he's going to do it? Of course it? he's going to do that. He does that like every time. Just a note to say that if you're hearing this, you're not currently on our subscriber feed. And we'll only be hearing the first part of this conversation. That's enough for us. In order to access full I wonder if he's going to cut it off mid-sentence like he did to that, that one girl. I mean, I've, uh, that was a, like he did to that one woman. 
Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I've done that in the middle of stuff. I'm like, I just can't take it anymore. And it's like right in the middle of what somebody's saying. So I understand the impulse. Subscribe <laughs> <laughs> at samharris.org. There you'll also find our scholarship program where Wait. we offer free accounts to anyone who can't afford them. Oh, okay. We don't run ads on the podcast and therefore it's made possible entirely through the support of our subscribers. So and through the largesse of your, your Hollywood family. If you enjoy what we're doing here, please consider becoming one. I don't need your money, but give it to me anyway. Today I'm speaking with my friend Bill Maher about the state of our world. Bill probably needs no introduction. He is the host of Real Time on HBO, and he has his own podcast. Why do people say that? <laughs> this person needs no introduction, and then they always, after they say that, proceed yep. to like introduce them. Yep. Every single time. He didn't go okay <laughs> this time. He might do it before they start their discussion. That's true. Before Real Time, which he's hosted for the last 21 years, Bill created and hosted Politically Incorrect on ABC. And he's the author of a new book, What This Comedian Said Will Shock You, which we discussed at the beginning of this conversation. Some fucking name for your book. And we turn to the aftermath of October 7th, the cowardice and confusion of many celebrities. I do like that, uh, that Sam put the, the ad for his sc- subscription feed like right over bill's face just directly on top maybe whoever does his uh, youtube channel doesn't like bill maher <laughs> failures of the biden campaign bill's relationship to his audience the differences between the left and right politically megan kelly loss of confidence in the media our expectations for the 2024 election the security concerns of some old school republicans the prospect of a second Trump term, totalitarian regimes, and how they fall, functioning under medical uncertainty, Bill's plan to stop doing stand-up, maybe, his experience of fame, Jerry Seinfeld, and other topics. Anyway, this was fun, and now I bring you... It sounds like it. He's like, this was fun. All right, let me, let's, let me, let let's me just hit the ground quick. running. Well, <laughs> well, I can edit, so so you can't. You can't I know, but possibly... I don't want you to have to. I'm just getting so. <laughs> Listen, this is worse than the beginning of our show. All right, let me let's, let me, let let's me just hit the ground running. Well, <laughs> well, I can edit, so so you can't. You can't I know, but possibly... I don't want you to have to. I'm just getting soda, but okay. I just is I just, that silverware? I have to hear that the clatter okay. on your. He's using his silverware to get a soda. Beautiful podcast. Okay, I think, what are you drinking, Bill Mark? Uh, this is just a little roofie for you, so <laughs> things go well after the show. No, this is something. It's like it replaces uh, diet soda. It's the healthiest version. Huh, what it, is, is it? It is uh, poured into sparkling water. It's some some chemist made it, and he's convinced me it's real. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, it's real. Yeah, I mean, it's real. The fuck, some chemist made me convince me it's real. Well, it is made of chemicals, sir. I believe. Some some uh, manufacturing company made this Sharpie, and they convinced me it's real, HK. <laughs> Was it the chemicals in it that convinced you? I, that, that's the only thing about it, actually. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I think was it's it that, Stevia, or what, what's the... Uh, there was a little in there, yeah. Uh-huh. But I ha- I was drinking Stevia soda, but he says there's a lot of chemicals still in there. Right. <laughs> is Everything is chemicals, dude. <laughs> He's like some chemist, oh like, 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 listen to what we've heard so far. I just want to fucking, I just, we're just, the first little exchange I'm going to summarize. Some chemist made a thing for me out of chemicals and then uh, let me know that the other thing I was um, uh, drinking was full of chemicals. <laughs> and convinced me that it's real. Not like convinced me that it tastes sweet. Convince me that it's real. So like he's convinced that it's real sugar, I assume is what he means. Like a, a full sugar soda. This I, this is amazing. I hope the whole conversation goes like this. <laughs> right. You know, it's always playing the odds. Well, you seem to be winning so far. Well, you know, let's not even go there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're going to go there. We well, got to talk about it. Well, first, I will remind, mm-hmm. I will have introduced you properly, obviously, in the uh, housekeeping, but I will remind people that you have a new book, What This Comedian Said Will Shock You, which um, <laughs> is really fantastic because it, so. I'm listening to it as an audio book and you read the audio and it's based on your, you know, 20 years of your end of show editorials, which yeah. you 
It must have been fun to actually go back and, and look at how times have changed. No, it was grueling, actually. <laughs> it was really- well, because I don't, I'm not a person who does well watching myself. I never watch my own show. I should. Mm-hmm. It would be much more professional right. to look at yourself. But I figured, well, I've been on 31 years. <laughs> Maybe it would make it worse. You know, maybe I would see something and get self-conscious and right. it seems to be working and, you know, so. so I, you, you, but you didn't go back and watch. You, you must have just looked at the transcripts. Of course. I, I, and, and look, those are my babies. Hmm. I mean, that's what I work hardest on on the show. It's what I love doing the most. I would give up anything else in show business before I gave up that. And they, look, they are good. I mean, but look, over 20 years. They're not all going to be 100 out of 100, and some stuff ages badly. Not terribly badly, not like I have very different political opinions. That was part of why I did this, to see if I did. But just, it just they're stale. You know, they're mm-hmm. making fun of uh, John Boehner. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. not funny anymore, yeah. <laughs> and half the country doesn't know who I'm talking about. So there was a lot of work bringing them up to date, but it was a labor of, of love. And people have been telling me for a very long time I should do this. You know, that you this yeah. would make a good book. Well, you took the time to write them in the first place. So it's, yes, it's, wait, his book is just well the transcripts of his uh, his stand up. No, I don't like think in so. his show. I, like I, his don't, I don't think I don't think that's. I think he's using that as source material. Okay. Versus, no, I don't think it's just like transcripts of his show. I think yeah, I think he's using it as source material. He should have just fed it all into an LLM. Had it, had it spit me out a book with this gar that's about this garbage <laughs> that'd be really funny actually if he did that i'd be like hey that's pretty fucking cool <laughs> be like, I, and i'd just call it i didn't even would write it, this book would it be copyrightable though no okay but yeah, would, he should do that then but it'd be very funny to write a book called i didn't even write this book <laughs> yeah and they're funny i mean everyone who reads this says i'm lolling on every page which is yeah. rare for a book, I think. But as I read over the book itself, after I finished it, I was like, yeah, people. And of course, they were originally done as editorials on a television show where I was getting big LOLs. Yeah, I mean, that's something I noticed in listening to it as an audiobook because you're, you know, the original form was for you to read it in front of an audience. And I'm hearing where all the laughs would be and the but there's no, obviously, there's no audience in the Oh, audience. wait a minute. Maybe he did just steal his old work. I mean, it's not stealing. You can't steal from yourself. <laughs> Repurposed. Like, whatever. Back in the I'm not going to buy the book. I don't care. Which, I mean, you could, you know, had you... <laughs> it's like a remaster. You would have had to put in endless pauses because the velocity of the laughs is like, yeah. it's like, it's like every four seconds, there's a, there's sure. a button and it's really... Uh, yeah, it's well, and my prime director... He could have used the same button Constantine used. He could have. It, w- it would have sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Bill Maher doesn't use a laugh track. Yeah, he's a funny guy. Sometimes. There was a few. One was, don't be earnest. I talk about that in the introduction. Don't mm-hmm. be earnest, which to me is when commentators talk about a subject as if it's more important to them personally than the starving people in Sudan. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking yeah, about? That yeah. kind of, and also put in the laughs. Don't, don't it just c- can't just be and you, sir, are bad. You got to leaven it, and as long as the laughs are always in service of the point and they don't do, go too far away, then it works for me. And that's- oh, but I mean, <clears throat> sometimes a gag is just a gag, and it doesn't even have to have a point. But I guess he's a political comedian, so that doesn't work so well. But I, there are people who are political who are funny who sometimes a gag is just a gag it's always what i followed and i think yeah i think you see it reflected in the book so we're talking on the uh i would call it a set it's not quite a set this is actually your bunker. guest house bunker <laughs> oh they're in the peewee's playhouse is there a video version of this and I'm set. And, um, <laughs> yes thank you for coming over i mean yeah no it's, it's that would explain him crazy. making himself a drink at the beginning of this Although, doesn't he usually drink, like, hard liquor during that show? He pretends that, like, if you, you, I don't know if you've watched any of those with us, he'll, like, like have a light, he'll light a bleeze, right? The media wench got hell mad at him one time when I made him, when I made her watch, because he, like, pulled out a bleeze, lit it, and then waited five minutes, and then cut, like, a third of it off and relit it again. <laughs> and she was like, what are you doing? <laughs> and he mixes, like, he doesn't even have good tequila, and then he'll mix it with, like, 
two thirds water. It's really weird. It's really weird watching him on there pretend to get wasted. It's pretty funny. You know, I, I do all my podcasts remotely, but um, it must be nice to have a little human contact. Huh, it's, Sam? It is I good. Mean, yeah. Those of us like myself who listen to you religiously, everyone, we do see you kind of as the voice of God. And I know you do that in your meditation even more, but <laughs> like that voice, I must say, I'm very flattered to be here because like I say, I listen every week and it's almost always some egghead like you with advanced right. college degrees. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm really slumming yeah. up your uh, podcast as, as well, a mere bachelor of arts degree and a comedian. And, uh, you know, as we've seen the eggheads are being, don't worry, Bill, it was already a slum. <laughs> a new batch of eggheads are going to be quite something. <laughs> Not the ones you have. Hard to slum that shit up after the Charles Murray incident. If we're going to be, if we're going to be honest, uh, no. <laughs> they're always good people. Yeah. Yeah. Except that Rory guy. Oh, that was interesting. Yeah. Well, he is an incredibly impressive person, but he's quite miseducated on on this particular point. (laughs) Really? Uh, Yeah. (laughs) It's really, well. Isn't that a conundrum in life that we all think about all the time? How can someone be so smart on one thing and not get it so much on another? And they're thinking about us the same way about certain issues. Yeah. Well, we we should talk about this because a lot of- Well, you already are, Sam. HK, we should do a show. We should. We should do a show about about this this podcast. Isn't it nice that we can have this conversation though? Shouldn't I? I'm not. Shouldn't we? We should. It's of late to what's happened post October seventh, and just we see this great fracturing of public opinion. But strangely, I've noticed that you know many people in your line of work, you know, people in in Hollywood, even some very famous people who agree with us about how the, th- the the moral landscape looks are terrified to say anything. And the oh, I hate this shit. Oh, all these people, this is, a, this is the hipster coffee shop thing, right? We're like, oh, I've heard of the yep. people telling me in private. Meanwhile, they're all so like many free people Palestine on their fucking Twitter. And he's like, that's not what they really think. They told me in private. And it's more like he probably like talked to them like somewhere and he was just fucking wearing them out. And they're like, all right, whatever. Fine. You're right, Sam. <laughs> I've actually had millions of people come up to me and tell me privately that Sam Harris is a fucking moron. And they told me that they can't say that publicly, but privately they wanted me to know that they think that. Uh, so, you know, extrapolate from that. It's, it's at least millions, if not, not billions terrified. at this point. There are A-list celebrities right. who are not terrified to be mistaken for Hamas supporters. <laughs> but anyone defending Israel... I know. But can you explain... Uh, how is it if the Jews control Hollywood? How is it <laughs> that it is so terrifying to state the obvious? There's a difference. Oh, this, I, this, okay, this is this, this drives me crazy. Now he's doing it. Now he's doing the thing. I mean, he's trying to do it as a joke, but um, <clears throat> he's conflating uh, the Jew, the, like the Jewish diaspora with like Israel, the nation state of Israel, and like that's that uh, that that's that's anti-Semitic, actually. Yeah, racists gonna racist. If you meet somebody who's Jewish, you're like, oh, you must love Israel. Like, what, what? You know, it's like, yeah, like you're Jewish, therefore you're a Zionist, right? Or you, or you, you meet. It's like you meet somebody who's black, and you're like, oh, you must know the King of Kenya. Like, it's sort of the same thing, right? It's like they're, they're like, first yeah. of all, I'm not even Kenyan, right? Like, <laughs> between a death cult yeah. and a, a group of people, however ineptly. This is attempting to defend itself against a death cult. Well, I, I will answer your question. But did I interrupt your introduction? Did we never get to like no, no. Gr- where you were? You know what? Fuck it. Start the whole thing over. <laughs> did no, I, what, oh, yeah, I well, cut I, you off for something? Yeah, well, no, I just... I, housekeeping? If people... No, I, I'll do a separate housekeeping. But if people notice the mm-hmm. that the acoustics are different here... We're like, don't worry, Bill. Like he'll studio, he'll so start the conversation mid around. you pouring yourself a drink. I mean that was fun. I mean whatever. I, that was that was the, that was human. That was a, that was actually a human moment. Happy You're on the be. lamb from yeah. the people who love Gaza. Okay, well, I mean there's so much to this answer as I think we both agree the mouth of the river is what I've always called it of the insanity that flows down from the left side of the spectrum is colleges, universities, somehow they became huge asshole factories. And um, they teach, I guess, post That just means that, like, you don't agree with young people, dude. Like, how does he not understand that? Like, when he was young, he was the person that 
people his age now viewed as the asshole coming out of college. And now he's older and he views college kids as assholes coming out of college. Like, how does he not understand that? Right. Like, I I understand that. I understand one day I'm going to look at college kids and be like, oh, they're all fucking assholes. Um, I hope I hope we don't. I hope you don't. I hope you I hope I don't, but I probably will. I hope you don't conflate. I don't necessarily understand why they're taking these positions on these issues. I hope you don't conflate that with God. These people are stupid, right? Those are two different things. Okay, Fair enough. Yeah. Have you had the the authors on called cynical theories? Yeah, I I know you're aware of it. It's sort of Lindsay and and yes, Rose. Yeah. Do you have, have you read it? Do you have an opinion of it? It's sort of, if people don't know, it's sort of a dissection of where this kind of crazy, what we think of, and I think we're, you know, old school liberals, basically. But what we- That means conservative. (laughs) Yep. Like what the liberals thought in the, in the 80s, and a lot of those positions are now positions of conservatives. Yep. And I mean, that's fine, but just like fucking- admit that the world is past like the world's passing me by in some ways right like if i meet young people i might know what kind of electronic like if they're into house music i might kind of know but that's because i'm a dj but like i don't know like like what are like the up-and-coming pop artists right i might know the big ones but they're no longer up and coming but the fucking world's passing me by because i'm getting old like like that's that's fine just like admit that that's what's happening i don't understand this i don't get it like this is the same as it ever was yeah yeah like it happens to everyone if you're lucky like you get old and you get out of touch i know uh a friend of my a friend of my parents is just like i just vote uh, he's he's like i'm he was he's like it was a, a quite some time ago but he's like i've never really been political he's like but as i get older i just kind of look to see what the young people are doing and i vote with them because they're the ones who are gonna have to live with the choices he's like i'm gonna be dead in 20 yep. years i was like whoa you're cool <laughs> Yeah, that's super based. Yeah. Nuttiness on the left. Yeah. The origins of it. And it goes, it's very detailed and arcane. And I, I don't think we can reproduce it here, but it's basically started in the 70s in France. Ideas about postmodernism. That's oh, no, they're talking about postmodernism, which is literally just the school of philosophical thought that came after modernism and was like skeptical of some of the grand narratives of modernism and brought some of modernism along with it. At first, when people were complaining about this, I just thought they didn't like ugly art. I was like, what, why don't you like, I mean, I don't think that's a great piece of art, but why are you so pissed off? And then I found out it was about philosophy, and I was like, oh, I'm a dumb fuck. <laughs> <sighs> On their way into American universities, and just the term post- Oh, no. He's talking about the Frankfurt School. He's like, soft. that's funny, because they're talking about how all these people hate Israel and the Jews, but he's like soft-peddling cultural Marxism which is like a version of cultural Bolshevism, which is like an anti-Semitic dog whistle. He has no idea that's what he's doing because he doesn't know shit, but that's what he's doing. I felt it was crazy because don't you want to be modern? What's after right, modern? Yeah, right. Nutty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what's How after much modern. better does it get? <laughs> don't you want to be modern? Sort of like what? The, the, that's a joke, right? That, I don't that's know. gotta be a joke. I mean it might be like it might <clears throat> might be like a little of column A and a little of column B, right? Where like modernism was just the name of a they could have called it bananaism, right? It doesn't matter. Yeah. And then it could have been post bananaism <laughs> because it was just like the and it's not like there was like a, all of a sudden in France they're like, aha, now it is time to do lay postmodernism, right? It's like <laughs> <laughs> like in, in hindsight, you philosophers and like studies of uh, uh, philosophers i guess people who study philosophy look back and go oh this is when things started to change some of these new schools of thought came out and we're calling it postmodern like it didn't they didn't just they didn't decide okay tuesday we switched to (laughs) postmodernism here's a here's a croissant and like he has to know that like you know modernism is not like <laughs> whatever is going on now it's like the name for a specific thing right and i mean it can he be has con- to know that well it could be confusing like to like if if you're 12 you'd be like <laughs> what do you mean why is it modernism now and then you know, you'd have to ex- or you'd just be like you don't never mind you'll be, you'll be, hopefully you go to college <laughs> like <laughs> or you're 12 don't worry about it it's the answer to your question is 
how could the people who control Hollywood be on the side that's against the Jews? Because everything, once you go past modern, you're, you're sort of back at your own ass again. Right. Wait, what? <laughs> your head up it. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. You, you unwittingly, uh, in mentioning that particular book, you have encapsulated. I don't understand that criticism. I, <clears throat> once you go past modern, you're back at your own ass again with your head up it. Uh, we were what listening to Bill Burr that? talk to him and he said, Bill Burr said, you're not even funny, man. I think you just say things that are weird and obscure. And it was very funny. Quality <laughs> <laughs> of our problem at the moment, because one of the authors of that book, James Lindsay kind of spiraled off into Trumpistan and conspiracy Oh, and got very, very weird. Yeah. But like, that's funny, right? All these people that like a uh, fucking like Ezra Klein and like Ina, our very first episode. Uh, nice mangoes <clears throat> both say to him is like and uh chris from uh decoding the gurus have said how is it that you keep making friends with all these people that end up going potato <laughs> like, yeah. well, when other people saw what was wrong with james Lindsay or charles murray or well everybody knew it was wrong with charles murray everybody could see what was wrong with doug murray everybody like we clocked dave rubin hella quick when he was friends with fucking sam harris we clocked brett weinstein hella quick you know what I'm saying? Like, how how are we, nope. like, how are these dumb fucks and people that he thinks are stupid able to clock all these fucking weirdos and fucking, all these fucking, like, ide ideology perverts before fucking one of the smartest people in the world is able to do it over and nope. over and over again? If nothing else, you got to give Sam credit for, like, maintaining his position at the very top of the right wing filter. Right. Like, he hasn't slipped further down. He's still just like barely a right wing reactionary. Right. Like he's for the most part, you know, like still progressive about some things, but he's like pretty far right wing about others, specifically the racism thing. He's very racist. Right. <clears throat> and just very, just overall largely bigoted, except for like, <clears throat> like against, like probably not bigoted against gay men, but that's because. <clears throat> or what we are normal lesbians, whatever the fuck that means. Do you know what I'm saying? But he sees those people as normal and he doesn't see like trans people as normal. He probably doesn't see black people as normal because he doesn't understand their culture and he ain't invited the cookout. Like, I think it's all like about it's, <clears throat> I think a lot of it's just about who fucking talks shit to him. Honestly. <laughs> yep. And you know, James, uh -huh. I, 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 I hear your pain, but, but he got very, very, very weird. <laughs> Helen, his co-author, did not, but it's not to say they're wrong about what they wrote in that book at all. It's just that once you get right. sufficiently entranced by the horror on the left or the horror on the right, you get sort of radicalized or self-radicalized. I'm sorry, did he say horror? Horror, horror. Horror, okay. Yes. Yeah. Come on, man. Two come syllables. On. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Very few of us have been able to keep both extremes yes. in view and in proportion. I mean, they're not. Just want to make that so clear. Point out in your. <laughs> Hold on, he's. Let's go back. Self radicalized or radicalized by your audience, and you just. Very few of us have been able to keep both extremes yes. in view and in proportion. I mean, they're not that. I mean, this is something you I, point out in your book. At equal extremes from reason, they're equally extreme. They're still very different. And yes. we have they're to not equally extreme, yes, I though. I don't know it. I don't know what he means when he says that because it's so it doesn't, I mean, does he mean like, is he just talking economics, like pure libertarianism versus like, or like pure anarcho communism on one side and then co or pure, pure anarcho capitalism on one side and communism on the other side. I guess they're both equidistant from whatever we've decided at the fucking center, but it's like issue by issue. But like the extreme on the left is like, we don't want personal property to exist. We think the state should own everything and distribute things according to people's needs. And then the extreme on the right is like, we don't think Jews should exist or black people. We think everybody should be a white Christian. And if you're not, you should die. Like those two extremes are very much not equal. Lindsay, and again, this is the issue that I'm always dealing with. And I think quite a few of us are. How do you get your mind around that problem of this person seems so smart on these things and we can sit and talk for an hour and I will talk to anybody here. Mm -hmm. I've talked to the far sides and always came away friendly with everybody. 
because yeah. we, we're not dwelling on the politics. And, we're, and when it gets to that moment where it's a political, uh, I mean, I had the, uh, who was the guy? Uh, Dana White. Right. You know, yeah. he's far right. He's a Trumper. We had a yeah. great time. You just have to. There's no other way this country can heal. You have to get over that thing in your head that says, oh, well, you know, four out of five of these compartments didn't flood, but the fifth one, that can't be enough to sink the ship. Right. You know? And the well, t- it's not a ship. What is the fifth compartment? Like, in this case. <clears throat> You're like, oh, they, 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 I disagree with them on tax policy. I disagree with them on the size and role of the federal government. I just, you know, I disagree with them on fucking uh, regulation of fucking oil companies. And I disagree with them on the value of the stock market. Okay, I can do all that. And then they're like, oh, also, uh, you, Dave, specifically, you shouldn't have the same rights as other people because of your, uh, who you are and, and who, you, who you fuck. And I'm like, well, that's just a deal breaker. I can't be your friend. I, I'm going to have to tell you to go fuck yourself. I don't know what to say. If it's my own personal moral failing, then so be it. Titanic, there was nine compartments. The guy, Victor Garber, comes out and says, only four of them had flooded. We'd be fine. But that fifth one did, and now we're going down. <laughs> and I feel like that's our minds. It's compartments and a couple. Well, wait a minute. Isn't it? Every- can't, can't, if there's five compartments in a ship, <clears throat> couldn't it be engineered in such a way with four, where four of them flooded? Sure, the ship's all fucked up, but it's not at the bottom of the ocean, and everybody gets off the fucking, or not everybody, but like, <laughs> couldn't it be engineered in such a way where that's a possible thing? <laughs> you think there are a lot of fail safes built into modern ships i don't know i'm not a shipologist i don't know everybody will be flooded i feel like you and i and andrew sullivan and you know barry mm-hmm. weiss and this there is a group of us but i do feel like we're sort of standing like this so barry weiss is a really interesting one because to this day she has never really truly explained why she left the new york times uh, she lied about being uh subject to anti-Semitic um, abuse in the, the slack, like their slack, but she was never provided in any screenshots and the outgoing CEO of the New York times when he went on Peter Kafka's recode said that they looked and they can't find anything. And like, if you're on like a corporate slack, Oh, you say anything to anybody in that organization and they can find it. <laughs> right? Like they, they own your ass yeah. on that as well. You know, <laughs> well, they should, you're in your, you're in, you're in, you're in the corporate slack. I think yeah, like you can delete it, but it's not actually deleted. I think she was mad that people were making fun of her on Twitter. And I also think maybe because Kara Swisher was at the New York times at the time. And I think maybe Kara was mean to her. And I think that was, I think that's what happened. That's just my guess. I don't have any insider information or anything there. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out what Bill Maher is saying here. I think he's saying like essentially, uh, the left has gone too far and there are like too many things that he doesn't agree with now that he has to like switch over to the right because I don't think he would if say, he votes I for the left, I think it's going to destroy the country. That, I, I'm, I, I'm the one that gets the message. Is not okay. You. True. He, he did not say that, but I think he is saying that like the, the left is going too far or something. Sure. I, is that I, what he I'm is with, saying? I'm with that, but he's, there's no way, there's no way like he's not voting for Republicans. No, I, I don't think he is, but he's he's kind of setting up the argument that he's not going to vote for the Democrats. I don't think he would vote for a Republican, but but so and I I don't want to dwell too. I, in fact, I ha- I hate talking about this stuff. Uh, I don't want to dwell too much on this. Um, but the, there it's a one thing if he decides not to vote for the Democrats, but he I don't think he's going to use his platform to encourage others not to, which are two different things. I mean, if that's what he's doing right here, then then he would be doing that. That's I don't I don't think that's what he's doing here. Okay, he's just saying that he doesn't like you and me mostly. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't like him either. <laughs> so us, and the hordes are coming from right. all around exactly. us, from both yeah. sides. So we have to like get into that that phalanx yeah. of the Roman soldiers. Yeah, that's a good image. Yeah. So back to Hollywood for a moment. Why is it that these celebrities are terrified to state the obvious in the aftermath of October 7th? So the aftermath of October 7th was, it's, it's, it's coming up on a year, friendo. <laughs> like, 
Uh, so what is the obvious here? What is he <clears throat> saying he, the he obvious wants people is? To, he just wants Hamas bad. And I can say it. Hamas bad. Hamas is a horrible governing body for the people of Gaza. Yeah, I, I would also agree with that. Um, but what he means to say is, why do all these celebrities not say the things that I say about this? Why are they? Why do they have a different position on the the, bro- the broader matter than I do? That's what he's saying, I think. And <clears throat> that's just because that's, they're just somebody else than you, Sam. They're not you, so they're maybe going to think about <laughs> things a different way. I don't know. They're not you. I don't. I. That's it. They're not him, so they don't think what he thinks. But he's saying they're not stating the obvious. I mean, like he he hasn't laid down what the obvious is, and I feel like it's not obvious. We'll see. We'll see. And so many are not terrified to get on what what is quite obviously the the wrong side of it. I mean, you, you, to be clear, there are people who signed letters castigating Israel in the immediate aftermath of October seventh, before Israel oh, had yes. done anything in response. Like, how is it that that was? moral high ground that they thought they could stake out and we oh, who 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 did that i mean there were people there were people criticizing israel before october 7th right but what, because uh, what, israel has essentially been like I, I hate this and the the thing that people talk shit on us for basically is that we like say people's names and say mean things about them right like that's the the, the criticism there right, you're saying mean things about this person i'm like well i'm like these i'm like this guy at least i use their fucking name when i talk shit on them he's like we had people doing x y and z he, they he sam always does this he won't tell you who and it's like well who did that who yeah. signing what letter like what are you talking like like this drives but me nuts. like israel israel has been treating the people in Gaza terribly for decades at this point. Right. No, I, you're not going to get any argument from me. I just don't like what letter who like, yeah. and he's not going to tell you. Would that be ad hominem or is that just that he's fucking making it up? You have Jewish celebrities. Oh, yes. who I won't name who won't. Well, this would be helpful if you would name them actually. So then we could have some point of reference, Sam. Mm-hmm your podcast or my podcast or rogan's podcast and talk about anything here because they're afraid they'll never work in this town again well the short answer is celebrities are stupid Mm. (laughs) no Uh, i uh, i exaggerate (laughs) i mean you're a celebrity dude (laughs) also like but that's like the, the 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 subtext of this right is that these people don't share whatever position i'm not even sure what the fuck position they're trying to espouse here right but they don't share whatever the fuck position these two are trying to espouse, so they must be stupid. And I don't, I don't ever assume that people disagree with me are stupid. Like I think that's, <clears throat> I think that's foolish. I think people that I disagree with have shown me that they're stupid, but not mm-hmm. by virtue of disagreeing with me. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Well, actually, uh, let me just add to this. Now, you're not quite exaggerating because a, 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 a Harris poll just came out. A Harvard Harris poll came out. <laughs> And they're they're actually completely out of touch with public opinion in the country. Seventy five percent of Americans want the IDF to go into Rafa. Seventy five percent. I don't think fucking five percent know what the fuck Rafa is. Yeah, I don't. I don't believe that. Where is he getting that figure? That's a single poll. But like, what I'm I'm just one. Like, sh- I don't know. Of like, four people? No, no. Well. The, the, the devil the devil in these this polling is always in the details right it's like who did they ask how did they ask the question did they first ask mm-hmm. do you know what rafa is like do you like it's it's so it's sam being like a a neuroscientist supposedly and like a skeptic shouldn't just base things off of one fucking poll yep Sam, let, let me say this in a nicer way. And I do mean this mm. in more sincerely than my insulting comment. People in the arts perceive truth differently. They get at truth differently, poetically, mm. metaphorically. They're not stupid in general. There are some, yes. But they just, it's not an information based talent that they have, it's emotional, it's about feeling. That's why they're so big on your truth and, you know, your felt truth, or whatever mm-hmm. phrase. That's Scientology. This is they're using for just, this is what I want to believe, so I'm going to. The world is not a completely rational place. I think you and I think it 
we can get at truth better through rationality, but that's just not how the people in the arts, they're, they're more emotionally linked. He that does know that he's in the arts, the right? That, and I just, I don't, this is such a weird like, poll to bring up because I don't think people know what the fuck Rafa is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, like he's paint, he's painting with a really broad brush here and it includes himself. Well, he's an artist. I think he's remembering that he's in that group. It's just who they are. And for many reasons, that's why we love them more. I mean, we idolize mm -hmm. them and adore them to the point of swelling their heads where they go, they go crazy because they're so adored. Mm -hmm. that, that happens a lot in show business. We don't, we don't have that effect on people, you and I. But like, Correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't his show filmed in L.A.? The whole, this whole thing, they, they both live in L. They, they, they both, they both go to Hollywood parties and shit, dude. Okay. So yeah, he's like very thoroughly ingrained in Hollywood. He is a Hollywood celebrity. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's his, that's, I mean, he, he would say that, that he's like a, a political pundit, which he also is, but that doesn't, it's not mutually exclusive with Hollywood celebrity. Sam Harris is yeah. a little different, but he comes from like a Hollywood family. Yeah receiving truth so yeah. they don't know the history of the middle east all they know is well the kids are doing it so it must be hip so you don't want to lose the young audience so let's just get with them they didn't do enough Man, he's ascribing a lot of beliefs to like a, a large group of people i i yeah i don't i don't think that i don't think that it's likely that most people who are uh, famous don't have access to information right i think if actually <clears throat> if you're famous and well to do you might actually be able to have more uh, free time to take a look at uh, world events if you're so inclined because you don't have to work 12 hours a day or whatever and i feel like just because someone doesn't share the same opinion as as me as you as bill maher like people shouldn't assume that they are ill-informed because they have a different opinion, right? Isn't so that, hold on. We, we have a, somebody found the, the poll on the news and somebody found the poll that they're talking about the, so it was, it was 70%, not three quarters, but approved of the Rafa invasion. If care was taken to protect the, the citizens and the operation would, and if it would get rid of Hamas. So it's like, the, okay. the, the, it was a, it was like a, it was like a, if this does the magic thing, would you approve it? And people yeah, are like, like, I love the magic thing. Like if I shot bullets into a crowd and only killed bad people, would you, would you agree with me shooting bullets into a crowd? Well, I would say no, but maybe 70% of people would say yes, because they want to kill the baddie bads. Then you could say 70% Americans agree with shooting bullets into crowds. Right. <laughs> and of course there's also tremendous peer pressure out here. I mean, the people who are the far, far leftist, I mean, they really control the debate. You do not want to get on their wrong side. They control the media. They control the gossip. So mm. you better be exact. Like when you had, we had the strike. They certainly don't control you the government. Be exactly on that page, and not have any questions about the strike. And I had questions. Many people, like who actually has the power in the power in this situation? Media is they that like lost on him? Really control the debate. You do not want to get on their wrong side. They control the media. They control the gossip. So mm. you better be exact, like when you had, we had the strike last year, you better be exactly on that page and not have any questions about the strike. And I had questions. You're one of the bosses. You're not one of the workers, Bill. Many people did, but very afraid to speak. It's not- He's also a scab. Political issues either, I think. You better get in line and believe that and parrot- I don't that. think scabs can else. take the moral high ground on a- on on a strike so <clears throat> he, i know he's part of the, the 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 union but like that doesn't mean that he's not the boss that's the thing is if the, 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 the these things usually break down like labor versus the bosses he's the boss he's not the labor but you remember there were like two shows that very publicly no i understand brought their show back during the strike and his was one of them yes he, because he's the boss he's not the labor 
So he has yep. different interests than, than the labor, even if he's part of the union. Else you are ostracized in this town. And, you know, that certainly is. Yeah, because you're a scab. You should be ostracized. Complained about it, and I don't blame you. are a shitty person, Bill. Bruce Willis complained about it. People who were just Republican, just believed in smaller government and the old Republican stuff, which is not against the law and is sometimes correct, but it got to the point where it was people like you and me. Right. Who <laughs> yeah. aren't even Barry Weiss. I yeah. mean, we're not even, con we're not, we don't think of ourselves as conservatives, and we're not. Barry Weiss is a conservative. We name almost any liberal issue, and we're like, yes, of course, we were there a long time ago. A yeah. long time ago, yeah. we were there on. So what he means is liberal issues that have already been decided, like uh, gay marriage and um, probably just gay. I think they just mean gay marriage. I'm not even kidding. He also probably means weed, right? like yeah. legalized weed. Yeah, yeah. But I think mostly they just mean gay marriage, because I think they're literally stuck in like the 90s. These are the, this is a group of people are generally in my age co or cohort are a little bit older who think we fixed everything in the fucking nineties. And the only thing left to fix was gay marriage. And once we fixed that, then it was all gravy and there was no more work to do. And those people are like the new reactionaries and they're usually yep. somewhere between like early forties to maybe 60. Yep. Oh, racism and gay rights and pot, yeah. whatever it is. No, I, I'm it's, left on every issue, except I'm right of John Bolton on jihadism. That's the one thing. Me that, too. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's that's the... Well, Sam, you also believe in that weird race and IQ shit. I'm a blind spot <laughs> yep. for them, because again, they don't know things. So it's just, it's really as simple as, well, the kids are doing it. And also, it's about brown people and white people, because they think Israelis are all white, which they're of course not. Mm -hmm. But... To them, it's the browner, poorer people and the whiter, richer people. And I think we know who the bad guy in this story is. <laughs> I mean, I think that it sort of breaks down along those lines, but not in the same way that it does in the United States. <laughs> I mean, I would really say the bad, bad person in this situation is the one committing genocide, right? Right. But what I'm saying is the, 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 the dynamic that he, <clears throat> he said that isn't at play, it's because his only point of reference for that is whiteness in the United States and blackness in the United States versus like where, whereas in Israel, <clears throat> it doesn't really break down that way, but it's the same dynamic where one group of people has the power and they look a certain way. Generally, they tend to, they look in the other group of people because they can, they can see that those you can like, otherwise it would be impossible to separate everybody. If you couldn't tell if it was all just belief, right? So there's some there's some racial stuff going on there, but it doesn't it doesn't mean that it's like a, a racist person with an ascot in Connecticut versus like a like a like a black person in the South or whatever. Like that just because it like because it doesn't play mm -hmm. out like that. He as a, he just seems to think that it that 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 a version of that dynamic isn't at play, and that's stupid. Yeah, it's in incredibly stupid simple they really can only perceive things simply like black and white is the perfect metaphor for them and that's why you know people of color all over the world can get away with anything i mean north Wait, korea what? starves its people you know china puts what the Uyghurs does he north think the north left north. is in favor of north korea what and the, the left is very famously not in favor of dictators so especially I, north korea's dictator i'm I, he's like saying that, that North Korea is getting a pass also is stupid because they are under the most sanctions of any nation on the planet. And the people are the ones who are suffering. Like they're not, nobody's yeah. getting a pass except for maybe the dictator because the sanctions don't affect the dictator. This is dumb. The China, if to the extent that China gets a pass, it's because everything in my studio and everything in Sam, everything in Bill's studio is made there and you can't. You can't fire all the workers and expect to have things. It's a complicated uh, relationship that the the West has with China, and it's mostly our own fault. Camps, the after the couple of African countries talk openly these days mm -hmm. about marching gays into stadiums and killing them for the crime of being gay. I mean, yeah, but Bill, how do you? Th does he not know about like the 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 evangel the like stream right evangelical missionaries that went to these countries and it's not like these this homophobia didn't exist before they showed up but the, the, there were white 
evangelical Americans, well-funded, who went to these countries and helped prop up these these sorts of belief systems and politicians who held these sorts of belief systems. And now, now he's the one making everything fucking super simple, isn't he? Yep. And it's just comical. The, the lengths that they will go to, to not see crimes if they're not committed by colonizers or, yeah. <laughs> you know, the patriarchy. Or, but it's even the UN. It's even, it's like a mall Clooney bringing a, an arrest warrant against Netanyahu and Sinwar as though they're equivalent characters. Yes. I, I mean, I, I was on The View this uh-huh. week. Oh, I didn't see that appearance. So how'd I, how'd <laughs> really, I call for Sam, you? you missed The View that day? <laughs> what, were you sick? No, I, I, they- I actually, I, in, in anticipation of this conversation, I've been following a little bit of your press. I watched uh, you with uh, Megan <laughs> Kelly. I watched, oh. I watched you in a few places. Um, yeah. I saw oh. you almost fight with her a little bit. And, oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So what, what uh, happened on The View? <laughs> well, you know, First of all, I was very glad to be there. I hadn't been there in a long time. I'm friends, really good friends with Joy and Whoopi for years. The other ones I did not know. They were new to the show. But, you know, it's a show that makes news. And it's it's well-watched and well-received. And it's in the zeitgeist. Mm. So I really wanted to go there and reconnect with my friends. And also, look, I'm not going to lie. I, I <laughs> They walked right into the feminist trap because... You know, they started in on, I forget how it's up, but Gaza, again, you're right. You're always the bad guy if you're yeah. the defending Israel because you're not upset about the women and children. If, being, yes, I am. very. If upset. you are defending Israel's genocide of the Palestinian people, then yes, you're the bad guy. Yes, correct. So <clears throat> I, I, I try to talk even more. If you're defending the Likud-controlled governing coalition of the nation state of Israel, you are probably a bad person or you have... <clears throat> or you have bad information, or you have a uh, bad character or bad morals. Yeah. No. Sad about it. I don't think that's good either. Women and children being killed anywhere in the world. My question to them is always: First, do you think Hamas should be destroyed? And people almost always say yes. I don't know how much they really know about Hamas. But wait a minute. But by that, it's 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 a <clears throat> yes, but. <clears throat> That's it. It's yes, yes, but not by any means necessary. No, actually, I don't believe that yeah. you because if if by any means necessary means well, what we've seen, where everybody's fucking apartment and house is all bombed out, well, then the answer is no. Yeah, like, do you think we should destroy Earth to get rid of Hamas? Right, right. That's no, or, like, no, I don't. You know, you go, hey, you know, the 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 mob was a big problem in Jersey. Should we have just bombed Jersey? Well, seeing as these people aren't New Yorkers, they'd probably say no. I mean, a few New Yorkers might be like, sure, I don't care. <laughs> but, <laughs> but like, you know, it's like, should we destroy Los Angeles because uh, uh, people are afraid of uh, MS-13? And they're, they're going to be like, no. And it's like, well, then I don't know. Well, like, well, you know, you, you, know, you, you got to, you can't, <clears throat> you know, you can't, you know, these people were against the um, invasion of Afghanistan and it's, and the bombing, you know, the bombing of the capital, and they were against all this stuff. And it's like, well, why were you against that, but not against this? It's really weird. It's really weird. Yeah. I think they kind of get that it is a. They get it as a trap. <laughs> they, they, well, uh, I'm not to the trap part yet. Yeah. Okay. okay so first, I lay out the war thing, which is yes, it's a fascist dictatorship and it's a terrorist army. Right. The, both those things describe Hamas. And they are despised by their own people. And they have avowed to wipe out Israel many times and have tried many times and, mm. and quite openly. I don't know if they not- are despised by their people. I, I think their their people don't, uh, like from what I've heard, I don't know this for certain, but their people don't, uh, like don't support them. But I don't think they're despised by their people because most Palestinians despise Israel because Israel has turned their country into, you know, a bombed out uh like bunch of rubble and and destroyed homes so uh so you know they the people that do despise hamas probably only despise hamas because of what israel is doing to to try and destroy hamas uh they think or they could i mean these are these are just us but somewhere else hk they could just have 
they could despise them because they have dramatically different politics than the, yeah true yeah you know i think that's the, the difference in perspective i think yep. um maybe between me and somebody like bill maher or sam harris is i don't think he thinks that uh, palestinians are just us but in palestine i think they think that they're like a different type of people in some sort of like meaningful way possibly even in a uh, um, genetic way do you know what i'm saying well the the majority of palestinians are children who have lived their entire lives in war so you know in that sense they have a very different perspective than us you know we've never been in an active war zone uh at least i haven't i'm i'm assuming you haven't uh but like you know th- in the sense that they're just people. Yeah. They're, they're just like us. They have complex political views just like we do. Uh, and yeah, you can't say like anything sweeping about all Palestinians cause they're not a homogenous group that all so, believe the same thing. <clears throat> I also just want to, he's like, they, they want to destroy Israel. They have, they have, do not have the means to do so. Yep. It's like, it's like me, like if I had like a, like a, an ax and I was like, I'm going to go destroy the statue of Liberty. It's like, all right, dude, you're just going to get arrested (laughs) for vandalism. Yeah. Like an overreaction in that case would be to bomb you or to bomb Fremont. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Keep trying to do that. Does that group need to be destroyed? And they say, yes. Then we're just talking about how to do it. Yeah. And you're saying, you know, better than. I, look, I don't know if they're using too many bombs, and you don't either. Whoever I'm they are. talking to, you just don't. They're right. killing what children. Do they're they're the killing like a bunch of children. Yeah, that's too many bombs. So, I mean, my take was that after the first couple days, that it was, you, I'm like, oh, you now you wilding out, now you're acting yep. crazy, and any other country that started that was doing that, the, the the United States wouldn't put up with it. So. Yeah, that is not retaliation. That is genocide. Right. <clears throat> day one might have been retaliation. Maybe day two or three was revenge. And then we go in and we get into uh, other other sorts of descriptors for what's going on. Yep. If Israel, I trust them more than any other nation to at least try to be humane. They've had remarkable why? patience. Well, well, they very much are not. Well, but I don't know why you would tr- like why I that, 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 that to me like. I trust this nation to wage a, a, the bombing campaign in the most ethical possible way. Like just even, just even the, the, the words, those words coming out of your mouth is fucking crazy. Like they've been bombing civilians trying to get aid. Like they, they've literally been bombing civilians running towards like those aid packages that are parachuted down. They bomb them on their way to the aid packages and they bomb them on their way away with their backs turned. They bomb them and gun them down. That so, is very clearly not defending yourself. That's killing civilians. This is also and that's genocide. This is also a thing where this guy thinks that like if you wipe out like I don't know 80% of the people who would self identify as Hamas or something that you would somehow uh, destroy Hamas. But <clears throat> these are sets of ideas like someone in chat said we bombed the shit out of the middle east for a very long time and uh the mujahideen are still there yeah that's also how you create new terrorists right i forget who said it like war orphans make good terrorists yeah like if you want to get someone to the point that they are willing to give their life to destroy you just do family. exactly what Israel is yeah, doing kill, to kill their, Palestinians. Yeah, kill their family. Yep. And all their friends. They were yep. a nation of psychopaths for pure self-interest. Right. Given what happens to them on the world stage every time they kill kids, it's in, in their interest to be more scrupulous than any other fighting force to minimize collateral damage. No, no, no. It's in their interest to have the United States and Great Britain say that they're doing that and to have people like Sam Harris say that that's the kind of country they are that's in their interest as long as that idea yep. is out there and that the people with a platform are spreading that idea then they can kind of do what they want there's just yep. no upside for them as a nation to be indiscriminate with their bombs so the fact that you know you know it's they have this additional problem that is that they're fighting a terrorist army that is using its own civilian population as human shields yes. that's a 
that has but this I, is okay this is this i don't like this because like okay this is an insurgency this is not an army an army has like a, a an army has bases you think you think the Likud party was ever going to let hamas have an army base nope and bomb the shit out of that so this is an insurgency not an army this is this is that, that this is being fought as an ins- insurgency against an occupation this is his his view of this is so stupid does he think that there's just like an army base where they have like helicopters and shit like what is he talking about <laughs> yeah they live under an occupation they're so not they, allowed to have a, an army right they have to they have those fighting against the occupation have to be able to blend in to the to the to the community that's that's the that's a very it's an old tactic it's it's the tactic the united states used against the british you stupid motherfuckers <laughs> yep i've heard you speak eloquently on that the yeah. the, the moral equivalence yeah ridiculous yeah. part of that scenario okay so but this wasn't my <laughs> yeah. feminist trap was yeah. All right, here you are defending, and I'm I'm the bad guy because I'm for Israel and you're for the Palestinians. And then I just always say, if you had to live in Gaza for even one day, and I don't mean during the war, of course, that's a mm-hmm. nightmare, but just under normal Gaza, you would run screaming and begging to live in Tel Aviv, in a, right. where people share the values that, that you prize. And if well, I wouldn't from- know because Gaza's never been not under, like since Israel was since israel existed gaza has always been under occupation so uh, who knows right i yeah and that's, i mean i wouldn't want to live in like 1940 usa how about women because this is a show hosted by women mm. and mostly women are in the audience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now you're in my feminist yeah, state. You yeah. can't argue with this. This is the ju- and, final and, jujitsu move. Uh, yeah. and when, and, but all you have to do is describe, like in most Muslim majority countries, including certainly Gaza, like the, what women go through for these people who are so obsessed with this word apartheid and thinking that Israel is an apartheid state, which it is not. It is. There's a real apartheid in the world, a yeah. gender apartheid. I mean, yeah. oh God, get the fuck out of here! They, they, <clears throat> they, they, this, they, they don't. They like this, this, this is that's the same thing as oh yeah. Well, why don't you hate your Muslim neighbors, the Saudis in Saudi Arabia? You'd get thrown off a building. It's sort of the same thing. It's like well, these people are being bombed. So, um, like we can uh, advocate to maybe work out some of the gender stuff uh, after the bombs stop dropping because you can't really uh, have positive social change and you know the uh, ways in which uh, uh, minorities or women or uh, queer people are treated if um, if you're just always running away from bombs i mean like yeah like i disagree with how louisiana is currently treating like women and and gay people and trans people but i don't think that we should bomb louisiana new orleans is fantastic so absolutely not (laughs) one half of the population not black and white, just male and female, is treated completely different with, with no equal rights in speech or how you can dress or reproductive rights or education opportunities, certainly freedom from sexual violence and sexual harassment. I mean, I could go down the list. I yeah. guess I did to yeah. some degree. That isn't the issue of the day? Well, not right now. <laughs> like, if- <laughs> Yeah. That is not the issue because children are dying. Right. If everything else was hunky dory, then we could have this fucking conversation about Gaza, I suppose. But if everything was hunky dory, like in my view, and my view is just my personal opinion, if everything was hunky dory, we wouldn't really even have this state of affairs there. Uh, it would just be an integrated place where Muslims and Jews, they might not even know. Oh, I don't know. Was my neighbor an atheist? I have no fucking idea. Like that's the, the ideal situation, the fucking very long term. And then I guess if like there's communities where uh, women are um, you know, mistreated and whatnot, then then we could talk about that. But there are like communities in the United States where that's the case. Some, not all, uh, Hasidic communities are like that. Some, not all, uh, far um, like Christian nationalist communities are like that. Um, and that that's a problem to be dealt with. But uh, it'd be hard to deal with that problem if we were bombing the shit out of like. 
certain part of Brooklyn or something. <laughs> like, yep. Like this is putting the cart before the horse here. Yep. That's going to be my next editorial. And also, yeah. I don't even know that that's, this is how, I don't know what flavor, like it's my own ignorance. I don't know what flavor of like Islam is practiced in Gaza. Is, is it, is it, is it like that? I don't know. I fucking don't know. I bet when the bombs start falling, nobody's really too worried about whether or not your head's covered. I'm just guessing. Just yeah. throw, like, I know you're looking for a cause, kids, which is great. I think that's a great impulse. How about this one? And like, I know it's really like, like maybe it's confused. crass to say, but I would rather like, uh, you know, a, a, a young girl, like a 16 year old girl have to wear a hijab than be blown up by a bomb. Like, is that, is that weird? Um, <clears throat> you know, it's the lesser of two evils, I suppose. Yeah. If I have to pick one. Confusion is so complete however because the hijab became the symbol of female empowerment for the women's march you have a shepherd fairy poster of a woman a gorgeous <laughs> woman in a hijab as you, you know just excluding the male gaze you know with the, this religious symbol which is in fact the mechanism of wait how would it if you you were looking at it being like she pretty hot and then how did that get rid of the male gaze there was a beautiful woman in a in a headdress oh they're getting rid of the male gaze. Well, no, not really, because you noticed she was beautiful, friendo. Like, it was just a poster. I know what poster he's talking about. It was a fucking. It was a. It was a beautiful fucking piece of artwork. He can go fuck himself. It was a great poster, and it wasn't the only promotion for the women's march. He's just wrong. Grinding this gender apartheid in Muslim majority countries, and you have women who are struggling to get out from under that. And the moment they show their hair in Iran, they're right. thrown in prison and <laughs> raped and tortured and killed sometimes. Like this yeah, argument yeah, basically right. boils down to they deserve to be bombed to death. At, in, at some point, yeah, right? Because they've subjugated some part of their society. So they should be, they should be bombed. Like it's, it's weird because, you know, you, you like obviously like what was going on in the Third Reich, eventually somebody had to start shooting those motherfuckers, right? Like so... You know that can go far enough that it, that an intervention is necessary, but there's this this that's that's not what's going on in in God. That's not what well. No, what I'm I'm saying what they're saying. No, I, is I, mean, like I understand. Palestinians. HK. I understand. I understand. I know. Okay. I understand. What I'm okay. saying is like that's not going on. That and also like I don't think that random Germans. I mean, a lot of c civilians died, but it, you know, I was hor that's that was a horror of World War II too, as well, right? Like, because there were people there who did not agree with the Nazis. They got their fucking shit blown up too. Yep. Of, of you sticking your head out so far, thinking you're so progressive, but actually it being back around <laughs> it under does, your yeah. ass. Up your own ass, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, I, Again, I like it's reason. not, yeah. it's not anti-progressive to say don't kill children even if they're Muslim. Right. And the other, the other thing is like, <clears throat> what's missing from this and um when chris kavanaugh recently spoke to uh sam harris he brought it up he's like hey you're not even talking about the asymmetry of power here and you're not talking about some of the people in the Likud controlled government who have just said straight up that they should just massacre all the people in gaza these people like control a government these people are in high positions of power in a government that has nuclear fucking weapons and they're saying these things like openly like on twitter and so like that's missing from this conversation like there's just so much missing from this and i think it's because they the the like what you said you're like well these people just deserve to die because they have the wrong imaginary friend essentially yep yeah, yeah it's oh, bill it's maher bad. is in this case just as racist as sam harris is back to you and and what you're up to here what how, <laughs> how do you think of your own audience at this point i mean you've got you've got two very different sure. gigs you're just talking on both platforms, but you have your HBO show and you've got Club Random. I, I got, I have. I mean, obviously, they, they, they couldn't be more different in terms of just the the execution. I mean, it's just this. Right. You, you must love doing this, right? I, here. I love them both, yeah. and that's why. I mean, this moment in my life is great because I feel like it is more complete with Club Random because now these are the two sides of me. I mean, suit and tie. And certainly not stodgy. I mean, I think people see Real Time as a pretty hip show that's pretty <laughs> freewheeling. Yeah. I was shocked when they let me put it on CNN. 
I mean, when they asked right. me to, and, right. and and I said, well, what about all the language in the? Yeah, we don't care. So are but, they are they airing? I haven't actually watched it on CNN. Are yeah. they airing all of Why full episodes? If, if no, you have I know. It but on HBO, it's the I mean, exact same cut. No, they had to. We cut out one segment because they have to put in commercials. Right. But they don't edit it, which I was shocked. That is shocking. They, you, now you can say fuck huh. on CNN and nobody cares. Is that one good thing that Trump did to, to the universe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it is amazing the way that happens. You could always say fuck you on know? CNN. They just chose not to because they wanted to be a news network. You could always swear on cable. Realize yep. where the, tr- the river has flowed to mm-hmm. until something indicates. and then <laughs> Maybe go, they oh, don't no. know that the C in CNN stands for cable. Fuck on CNN and nobody cares. That's where the country is. Right. That is different from even 10 years ago, certainly 20. And, yeah, when, I, and yeah. when I first did The Tonight Show, you couldn't say ass on TV. So right. we've come a long way, baby. <laughs> on broadcast TV, that, yeah. Yeah, that's different. You could have said uh, you could have said fuck on cable all the way back because that's cable. That was the allure of cable was that you were able. Well, one of the main things was that you were able to get movies that weren't censored. That was one of the main yep. things that people liked about cable is you could watch R-rated movies on cable this because yeah i remember like it was exactly. such a big deal when comedy central was like yeah we're just gonna play an episode of south park that just says shit like uh, 200 times who i am when and it's I'm like yeah you, you're allowed to do that <laughs> and we're just sitting around and i'm always stoned for it that makes a big you are not stoned uh, we disagree you're not There's stoned. No agenda my show i have an agenda i mm-hmm. look at that show real time as a show that catches people up on the news who don't have time to follow it every day, or maybe they do and they just like an analysis of it. There's both sides of that. But a lot of people watch it to get the news. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, oh, this is what happened this week. That's kind of so scary. Clear agenda. And I work many, many hours. I mean, I guess it's better right. than getting your news from Football Fox. Players versus baseball. Once a week, you really want to get it right. Right. But this is just, you know, it can be anything. And most of the people here are not political people. And that's great because I don't always want to talk about politics. It's a bit yeah. of a busman's holiday for me. Yeah. I think real time got better when you went to just two people on the panel. Totally. It was too crowded. Too crowded. Yeah. Could, could not agree more. I, I forgot what forced that. Uh, did it just the pandem- I wonder if he's, I wonder if, if, if the pandemic and he's having a hard time getting like new and interesting guests because he's like the world is leaving him behind and he's not willing to admit that. <laughs> accident okay it was the pandemic uh-huh. pandemic did us a lot of good got us a better audience also because we had to uh socially distance and so the crowd was like only a third of the size and mm-hmm. they were awesome and i was like hmm why don't we just keep i'd rather have these people and you know we just for a while there was people who i don't know why they persisted in coming to a show they must have known was going to be somewhat upsetting to them or to me because they were a very far left woke crowd and i've never been there Hmm. but there was years when i was fighting with my own audience you know saying stuff that was like perceived in any way as not being towing the woke line and i was you know i have pictures on my wall of me doing this giving the finger to the crowd and i would be you know and a lot of people said they liked that. It was kind of interesting. And I, I could see how that is interesting. It's certainly not what you see in other talk shows, the talk show host saying, fuck you to your own audience. But they would just annoy me with their lack of open-mindedness. Yeah. You have some of these great moments where you sometimes you'll tell a joke and it won't land. And you'll look with contempt <laughs> at your audience like, okay, I'll wait. I'll wait for, I'll wait for the laugh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that, that's the thing is like, you have a right to tell the joke, but you don't have a right for other people to think it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's truly the sign of a good comedian is when you tell a joke and it doesn't land, you just sit and wait for a laugh. The best, the best, the best one a joke didn't land, by the way, would, uh, was a straight up David Letterman was the best at that. He would tell a joke that didn't land and he'd just sit there and kind of look at people. And then he'd just, sometimes he'd just walk off and come back out and tell the joke again. <laughs> <laughs> because that's like that's funny right or he would like repeat the punchline like four times and then it became funny because it was so stupid like you know what i'm saying like (laughs) like he was the king of that but he was very funny that's playing off a joke that doesn't land (laughs) 
But yeah. now uh, yeah. the audience has been awesome, yeah. and they they're my people. There are people. They they mm -hmm. laugh at both sides, and they don't hold it against you. For, they they definitely cheer stuff that i mean honestly bill it just sounds like you're attracting a more conservative audience i'm not saying a conservative audience but a more conservative audience than you used to maybe or maybe he's just maybe he's also like just making uh shit up like maybe it wasn't that bad like maybe he had a, a couple times where they booed him and he's like acting like it was all the time he's making like a mountain out of a molehill or whatever that's possible too right yeah, I think they're where we are, basically. Which I mean, I, I can't imagine a whole lot of leftists being like super excited that they got tickets to go see Bill Maher stuff that's anti-Trump and stuff. I think they're where we are, basically, which is, you know, give us back old school Republicans. Give us back a party that we might even consider voting for. Not these nuts. And get, also get rid of the far woke nonsense on the left. By the way, on the view, they were saying I should not use the word woke. And I was wondering, I was going to ask you about this. It is a word that triggers people. And it mm -hmm. is a word that, like a lot of people, including a lot of African-American people, I understand, it has a special meaning of its original meaning, which I think we all think was great, to be alert to injustice. Right. And then it migrated to a very different place. Much but that's because of the fucking media. That's because of the fucking propaganda p project that you're a part of, Bill. Yeah, the right wing. That's, that's because of... Or the like, right wing co-opted that word. I would... Uh, reactionaries. They could be like centrist reactionaries or whatever. But okay. yeah, they, they turned it into like... They turned it woke is when woke is when you don't like my joke because it's racist. And that's that's never what it meant. But that's like or woke is when you don't like my book because it's racist or whatever. That's like what they're they're the ones that changed it, like in the way that we talk about it. And um that not it wasn't it's oh, this is so crazy. It it got it like it just seems like they were they they gave a go with CRT and that didn't work. And they gave a go with groomer and that didn't work. And now they're going with woke, but like, it's just the same old thing, like political correctness. It's, it's a stand in. They're using the word to mean something they've always complained about. Yep. But Bill Maher has a long history of like, not liking, uh, <laughs> being politically correct. Right. And that's, that's fine. I just wish they would stop complaining about it. <laughs> I seem to remember he even named a show after not being politically correct way the word violence for example has migrated it used to mean oh i know what violence is it's physical and it hurts and and now it's just like anything i don't like yeah and well no 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 no, no. They're, they're going back to like act up uh the, the anti the the, the 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 like in the 80s they, they would say silence is violence and they were talking about no because nobody was talking about the aids crisis like this this there's a long history of of using using the term violence or comparing things to violence in a hyperbolic way to get people's attention. So we have a term for physical violence. It's physical violence. Well, it's just you know, violence. That's why, that's why we have the term physical violence, but there are other forms of violence. I'd say like economic, like, there is economic violence. Yeah. Like, I would argue that, like, emotional abuse is violence. It's, yes, I, 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 I don't, I, I wouldn't be able to argue against it, but I don't want to sit here and split violence hairs, if that's okay. Okay. For clitorectomies and suicide bombing, that's not violence. That's just this voice of the oppressed. <laughs> Wait, what? Right. No, that's violence. <laughs> But uh, that's that's so even I physical violence. What? Find some other word and get people to use it. I for, don't know. Well, I, I guess I'm sort of out of touch with the original roots of it. I mean, I, I when I started hearing woke everywhere, it was already contaminated with. Right. Well, that's your fault, Sam. Right. A fair amount of moral confusion. No, so it was keep... it was an old school term yeah. from decades ago, yeah. and it was certainly understandable why black folks in this country would need to. Yeah, for their own survival, stay woke, and it's it's a shame because it is a great word with a great history. But yeah, I mean, but that's, that's you, 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 but Sam just gave away the game. He's like, oh, a bunch of my friends contaminated this word before I even heard it because I didn't know any fucking black people. And Bill's like, oh, you know, I've dated black women actually. Unlike Sam Harris, I feel like Bill has um spoken to black people. 
yep. like outside of the context of bringing them on his podcast, right? Yep. Hostile takeover. So in thinking about your audience, the point you're making about going against the audience and that not being conventional, uh, that's especially true out in my world. I mean, many of us talk about a phenomenon that we call audience capture, where, you know, if you're, you have a podcast and it's really all of alternative media, so podcasts or newsletters, it relates to the, what we talked about earlier, where people get radicalized by their own audience because they, they begin to cater to the signal in their audience that is driving clicks or driving subscription. You Please know, throw Dave Rubin under the bus. The audience wants to hear just more and more about how Trump is awful. And then you just see how, oh, no, he went the other way. That channel becomes, <laughs> um, on the one hand, boring, but not, not to the fanatics, but also just less than scrupulous in how they call balls and strikes because they're just now they're on team whatever it is well i think the best example of that is certain people have gone over to msnbc mm. like who yeah. you know who yeah. were well like nicole wallace and i like her very much done done my show and i see her i think she's great she's very pro and very smart but she was hired i think as i'm sure she was she was a bush spokesperson so she was hired as the conservative, but I think this is probably when Trump was, or maybe it was before that. But anyway, it was like okay to have a conservative if they were like anti Trump. I mean, David, not right. David Brooks, Brett Stevens also said, I think, um, or indicated to me once that, you know, he's invited on that network, but usually it's only limited to a certain. Never Trumpers. Yeah, a certain area that is not going to upset the MSNBC audience. Mm -hmm. Right. Like you have a conservative on, but he's agreeing with us on the doctrine that we've all agreed. MSNBC yeah. has yeah, a lot of conservatives doctrine. on, like to do interviews that are I like would... very pro-Trump. Yeah, does I he mean, mean I... as a host? Yeah, she's a ho that. That's the other thing is like the host is mostly reading off the teleprompter. The producers are the producers and the staff are the ones putting the show together most of the time for the host. Okay. Yeah. Like if, if MSNBC hired like Nick Fuentes as a host, yeah, people would be upset. <laughs> I'd make him read, I'd make him read fucking shit off the teleprompter and make him read shit that drives him <laughs> fucking crazy. Make him come out and everything. I agree with too. It's just, I just object to like forcing it. But anyway, so like, I think somebody like that, they go over to MSNBC as a guest, you know, on the show a lot and they do well. And but again, they're they were a conservative. They were a Bush administration person. Then they get hired. You know, now you're there every day. The only mm -hmm. people you talk to, are, and and sudden and and slowly you go right from just an, a conservative but a never Trumper to a full on liberal. That yeah, that's a little creepy to me. I've noticed what this takes away the agency of all of these people. We're going to have to stop the podcast here, but I want to I want to, and this is a good place to end it. It actually takes away their agency. You have taken away mm -hmm. that you have, you have suggested to me that some, the Bush administration was 20 years ago. You've suggested to me that Nicole Wallace, who worked for the Bush administration, uh, did not switch teams of her own volition after, and I, as I gesture broadly at the political landscape. Yep. That, that, that isn't the case. She's doing it for, for clicks. Going for click. She's doing it because she's in the MSNBC, and the MSNBC turned her into this. It's like, well, what if she just fucking, what if she just fucking tw switch teams, dude? What if she was like, well, this is crazy. I can't. I mean, they only kind of got two choices here. I guess I got to go with this one. It's like you know, I go to the store. You're like, oh, I want some apples, and you look at the apples, and they've all got some kind of mold on them that you think might kill you. And you're like, well, shit. I guess I'm buying oranges today because the oranges are on the other side of the store, and there's no mold on them, right? Like. It's not that you like oranges more than apples now. It's like, you get, well, you don't like the apples are fucked up. So, you know, I got it. It's, it's like, <clears throat> it just takes away the, it takes away the, um, it just, it just completely removes these people's agencies. It re completely removes their ability to grow and change and to uh, accept that, that maybe they were on the wrong side of some stuff when they were younger or when they were employed by the Bush administration. It could have been that she was the Bush administration and disagreed with a lot of the shit going on there, but that was her job. And she was a Republican and she, was, you know, when that ended, she, it was time to go. She was like, well, that's going to be the end of this for me. Who fucking knows? I don't, I, I don't know fucking Nicole Wallace's history and you Bill Maher don't know it either. 
Who fucking knows? Maybe she was a liberal the whole time and she was like, this is a great gig. I'm getting paid pretty well, learning skills. Like, who fucking knows? But you're taking away this person's agency, suggesting that they've been like destroyed by MSNBC. And don't get me wrong. There are people with a blue wave emote next to their name on Twitter who have been destroyed <laughs> by MSNBC. I've had to pull, I've, I've had to pull, I've had to pull co-hosts of this show back from the brink. I'm like, you're a little too MSNBC pilled, just a little too MSNBC pilled to watch something else, anything else. I don't care. Watch Howdy Doody. I don't give a fuck. Um, <clears throat> so this was really, really not what I was hoping for. And I know that the, the, the end they're getting into like the sort of woke stuff. I, um, our position on the, the, the situation in Gaza is very clear. We've made it very clear. And I, I think all we can do is make it clear when it comes up. And I think it's bad for this show and bad for my network for me to be just another person spending a lot of time on that. Um, it's not that I don't have strong feelings. It's just that's not what I'm good at. I'm good at media analysis and uh, observations of like online communities. Um, so it, I feel like I feel like it's bad. You and I end up talking past each other. Uh, I end up trying to move along on things um, because I've talked about this more than I want to. And, uh, you know, you uh, as a co-host here once a week haven't talked about it much on air. And I feel like when this stuff, even just kind of any left versus right stuff comes up, I feel like we're, we end up pulling against each other in some ways mm -hmm. as hosts of the show. And so I try to avoid that stuff. And I was hoping they weren't going to spend too much time on that or that, that maybe Sam was going to put it in the post game, but they spent a bunch of time on it. And I had to spend a bunch of time on that issue that I feel like it's pretty well-treaded territory, not just uh, on, on this show, but on the, the channel more broadly and in uh, our community on discord and stuff. So I feel like I just don't, I don't like, I don't like the current state. I just basically don't like when any particular issue is flooding the media sphere and it, um, shakes out it kind of almost as like left versus right or whatever. I, I don't like when that happens because it floods the media sphere and sometimes it makes it, it makes it me feel like it's harder for me to talk about the things I actually want to talk about on these shows, but that's the way it goes. And that's what happens when we don't preview stuff and don't pull clips <laughs> for our podcast before we do the podcast. So I think I'll actually close the show out. Usually when you're here, you close it out, but I'll close the show out this week. Uh, thanks everybody right. for joining us for the intellectual dollar tree. Uh, check out uh, this freebie week. So the show will be a freebie. All of our shows will be this week. So you can go to eplex.store or patreon.com slash echoplex and uh, grab the members version of the show for free. And while you're there, consider signing up. And uh, this is going to be Boomers by Periscope. I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the contents of my drink and change the color of the lights in my room. And we'll be back for red light. And things are not going to uh, get better or they might. I don't know. We'll see which uh, these stories we run. See everybody in the post game. <laughs>